This is Bishop Kim Brown, and I am so excited that you decided today to join us on the Mount Global watching the stream. We count it a joy to be able to share the gospel with you today, and we want to let you know we do not take for granted that you are participating in Global Church. So we thank you so much for your time. I know that today there's going to be a word just for you. As well, I want to remind you that we don't give like traditional churches do. We are a spontaneously giving church. We believe according to the wise men, the parable of the wise men says that when they saw the Savior, they opened up their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and they shared it with Christ. So we believe that the moment that you realize the touch of Jesus today via the global audience, that you're going to walk in the obedience and will of God as well and open up your gold, your frankincense, and your myrrh and be able to share it with the kingdom. We love you. We thank you so much for this awesome privilege. Continue to be a part of the Mount Global. We hope to see you in person real soon, and we thank you so much for giving us the privilege today of being able to sow the Word of God into you. Hey, my name is Minister John, and I want to be the first to welcome you to the Mount Online Campus. The Mount Online Campus is a virtual campus. So what does that mean? It means that it's a campus that's not a physical location, but it's a location that you can interact with online. The Mount Online Campus was established by Bishop and Elder to provide congregational care to you, our global partners and streamers, so that you can have the same services that we have here at the Mount. You may never have an opportunity to be a part of a worship experience and come down to this altar and receive prayer, but through the virtual campus, we will provide you with an opportunity to have ministers pray with you from this location inside of your home. Not only do we provide you with prayer as a congregational service, we also provide baptism. That's right, baptisms. That means we'll connect you with the local church in your area or even one of our locations that's near you so that you can have the opportunity to be baptized just like we do in this pool here in Chesapeake, Virginia. Here at the Mount Online Campus, we have the capability to provide house blessings and also house dedications. So whether you're moving into a new home or you just want us to pray for your existing home, we can do that here at the Mount Online Campus. So I've listed a few of the services that we provide, but we're not limited to those. We can also service you if you're in the military. Maybe you just had a baby and you want to do a baby dedication. Or maybe you're about to go into surgery and you just want somebody to touch and agree before you're healing. We can do all of those things. So we want you to reach out to us. You can find us at themountleads.org. And if you would like to email us, you can email us at moc at themountleads.org. We can't wait to hear from you, and we can't wait to serve you. Here at the Mount Online Campus, we're doing church differently so that the spirit of this house can be in your house. Hello, Mount family. Welcome to the Mount Global 360. I am Pastor Teron, the senior site pastor of the Mount Virginia Beach. My assignment is to lead us in our affirmation and to lead us to the throne of worship. Um, we thank God for you all and we pray that all is well right where you are. So let us prepare for our affirmation. Amen. The year of exhibition. I boldly and faithfully declare that the year 2020 is the year of exhibition. John 2020 establishes a biblical standard that shall set the tone for this year. The exhibition of God will cause me to become an evident witness to the world that the grace and favor of God is unstoppable. This year, God shall reveal himself to me in fresh ways and I will not settle for less than God's best for me. The pain of my past has prepared and equipped me to handle the opportunities that God will provide supernaturally. God has promised to pierce obstacles and meet my needs in ways that are beyond my ability to reason and understand. I am fully persuaded that God is increasing my anointing and establishing a public record of my success and will paralyze any opposition that attempts to hold me in fear and bondage. This year, I must enlarge my dreams because of the people I am assigned to impact for the kingdom. I will walk with unusual optimism because God will display his love for me with undeniable manifestation. 
I am not normal. There is nothing about me that is average. I am a world changer. Because God has observed my faithfulness and positioned me to have kingdom impact, every area of my life will increase. I must forgive and release the pain of those who have hurt me in my past. Because God is ready to publicly establish a record of vindication and recompense for all that I have endured and survived. This year, I will not allow the limitations of others to distract me because I am empowered by God to take territory and accomplish much for the kingdom. I am ready to see God answer my prayers, manifest my dreams, and use me to model for the world the favor of God. My progress will be unhindered by any satanic attacks. I will not waver because God is my ultimate sustainer. As God continues to provide for me, I will be positioned to be a blessing to many. I am prepared to walk in obedience as God opens doors for me and I am equipped for unusual success. I believe this season of exhibition will propel me, my church family, and my spiritual leadership into new levels of grace, enabling us to take more territory for the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Come on and put those hands together right where you are in your living room. Give God glory as we have affirmed what God has spoken to us this year. Amen. Through our man of God. Come on, y'all. Let's get ready to affirm even now our giving affirmation. You all know that it is our obligation and we believe by faith that as God continues to increase us, that we will operate in the spirit of giving. The church operates and continues to operate. Amen. Off of the benevolence of the believers. So let us prepare for our affirmation. Let's go. My giving is evidence of my faith. My giving record shows that God is a provider and I am abundantly blessed. My giving is a public record of my heart for where my treasure is, is evidence of my godly affection. Father, thank you for giving me the opportunity to display my love, faithfulness, obedience, and gratitude towards you through my giving. With my giving, I break the curse of financial poverty. Through my giving, I release a spirit of favor and provision because God loves a cheerful giver. Seed release, lack be removed, harvest return. And because I am a giver, I eat the best, I drive the best, I wear the best, I live in the best in jesus name come on and put those hands together as we celebrate amen our ability to continue to give to the kingdom praise god right where you are let us bow for a word of prayer god we give you glory on today we thank you for allowing us oh god to still yet be here in the land of the living god we declare that even though the coronavirus is sweeping through the world God, we declare by faith that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And so, God, we ask now that your Holy Spirit will take a hold of this worship moment, that, God, you would have your way in this place. God, we pray for every believer. We pray even now for the world, the country, that, God, your hand of mercy will continue to be upon us. Oh, God, have your way on tonight. And however you decide to bless us, it shall be all right. We give you all the glory. For you are truly worthy in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on and put those blessed hands together as we receive worship and arts ministry in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Have a great weekend. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. It may look like I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded. 
it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you, Jesus. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. So this is how I fight my battles. This is how. Regardless of what's going on, this is how. This is how I fight my battles. I gotta keep holding on. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. It may look like, it may look like, it may look like. Come on, say, it may look. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm This is how I fight. This is 
Praise the Lord. I know you were just blessed by the worship and arts ministry here at the Mount. We're so grateful to God for this opportunity today to be able to come into your house, your living room, your iPad, your cell phone. Maybe you've got us up on the big screen. In fact, we know that around the world right now, there might be people who are watching for the very first time. So thank you so much for hanging out with us. In fact, if you were here in the facility and you were worshiping with us for the first time or as a guest, we would ask you to raise your hand. So why don't you just go ahead and act like you're in the sanctuary right now. Sit in your living room, raise your hand. And um, we just thank you. We can see hands going up all around the world. So thank you so much for hanging out with us. And we invite you that as soon as this season is over, come hang out with us at one of our locations. We know you will be blessed, and we will be so blessed to be able to receive you. Look, we're doing things a little bit different during this season. And so we want to just remind you, if in this season you haven't um, been able to have increase, please know God is not expecting you to have to bring your tithe if there's no increase. But if by chance you're one of those believers that have been able to sustain your increase during this season, you're still working or you're still receiving um, your income, please remember that we're surviving even in this season because of the tithes and offering of the saints. So we invite you. There's information on the screen. Don't forget, if you are part of one of the sites, to make sure that you're sending your offering to the appropriate site where you attend and where you are fed. So all those numbers are up on the screen, and we invite you to um, share in that moment and be able to give based upon that moment. And we just thank God for that as well. If you're old school like me and you need to bring your tithe yourself, there's a box outside the administrative door here at the cathedral. That is a secure box. It's checked every day. And I want to thank you that last Sunday in the midst of all this going on, this church is so mature. The fellowship is so mature that across all the sites, you were still a blessing. So we just ask you to be sensitive to that. But once again, if you're in a season where you have no increase in the house, please know God is not holding you accountable for what you don't have. You are fine. We will serve you, love you. I can't wait. Can you imagine when all of us get to come back into the actual sanctuary? Now, look, let me tell you, the building is closed. But the church is not closed because the church is really the body of Christ. And so um, here at the cathedral, the building is locked down, but all of the phones are still operating. We're still receiving calls from 9 to 5. And with that said, I want to thank God for all the staff. Can you do me a favor? I know you're in your living room. You might be in your bed. But put your hands together and bless God just for the staff that has been making 
all that's going on with the Mount 360 happen. All of the site pastors, all of the staff that have been coming together, breaking off our part of the ministry and serving the kingdom so that you, there is no way anyone that is a part of the Mount Global Fellowship of Churches is going to be able to say they were malnourished um, during the um, pandemic because there has been more word going forward. Um, we've got something coming very soon, and I'm so excited. You're going to see it start to happen this week where Minister Ulysses is going to have a children's moment. Um, Minister Patrick is going to have a teen and youth moment. And then Dr. Scott is going to have a moment to just help us maintain our sanity during this season. So we're trying our best to serve you. Continue to pray for all of the staff that are working behind the scenes from home and everywhere else to make this moment happen. And we're so, so, so grateful about that. Once again, pray for those in our fellowship. We do have people in the global fellowship that have tested positive, but they're doing well, but we're praying for them as well. And would you just do me a favor, all doing worship today while I'm ministering the word, would you um, just tweet out pictures of you and your family, you and your cousin, you and the dog watching the stream today, wherever you are. In fact, do me a favor right now, call somebody and let them know, hey, we're having church. The good news is today you could have the rollers in your hair, but we are still having worship. And so with that said, there is a word from the Lord. I'm so excited today to be able to share the word with you. So go with me to the gospel, um, the epistle of Rome, the church to Rome, um, Romans chapter 8, verse 18. One verse, and we're going to walk through about four or five reference scriptures today, but I know there's a word from the Lord. Look, wake somebody up, shake them even in the house, and let them know we still have in church. We might not be in the building, but the building is not the church. The people are the body of Christ. So watch this. Romans chapter 8, verse 18. Let's read it together. It is so amazing. Watch this. Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. Come on. I need you to say it with me right there in your living room. Let's say this together because this is how we're going to get through this season. So let's say it together. All your family, let's say it together. Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. I'm so excited. God woke me up this week and told me that Sunday you are to minister from this subject. So look at somebody around the room. Send some hearts if you're on Twitter. Um, we, hearts are going to be our way of high-fiving now. That's our new amen. So let somebody know that the word of God is blessing you and God has led us to preach from this subject today. What will be different? What will be different? Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for this opportunity. And although we're preaching in an empty sanctuary, we're not preaching an empty word. And we thank you that around the globe right now, you've shut us down so that we can sit together. The church today is larger than the church has ever been because it's not about a building. It's about the people. And so we thank you for the word of God that will go forth today. And we declare right now in the name of Jesus that you anoint us freshly and that we will be better after hearing the word of God this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, you know, if you've ever been with us in this room, you know the reality is I always tell people God speaks to me kind of gangster and ghetto. You know he's different with me. Now, I know for some of you, you know you come to the garden alone and all those kind of things, but God steps to me with a different kind of tone. So the other night, I want to put this picture up on the screen because this picture is going to help me to show you how to walk into this moment. That's my dog. Um, now, you know we've got three Yorkies. That's one of them. That's, um, that's a Roycey. We call him Roycey. He's, he's the thickest one. He's the one that eats the most. He's the one that's the most aggressive. So the other night, Elder and I, since we've been locked in, we've been watching All American. I'm going to give them a free commercial. If you haven't watched that show, go home on Netflix and Ben watch All American. So we're sitting there the other night and we're watching All American. And the reality is I look over at my dog and this is what he's doing. Now, the other two dogs are just walking around the house. You know, you can tell they feel with a little anxiety. They can't figure out why we home all day. I told Elder the other day, these dogs would be so glad when we are um, off of self-quarantine and we can get out of the house and go back to our normal routine because we messing them up all day because they walking around the house. I think two of them are afraid we've gotten fired or something. They're like, y'all need to go to work. But this one the other night was laying, and you can see him laying there 
He, he is literally in another level of sleep. He got his leg up in the air. He, in fact, he, what, what caused me to look at him, watch this, is that he was snoring. And so I'm sitting there, and I'm just amazed that this dog has peace. And then the Lord spoke to me. Now, what did I tell you earlier? God doesn't speak to me the way he speaks to you. But I promise you, now let me get you ready. In your living room, you're getting ready to have a shout cue. In the bedroom, you're getting ready to throw the bed spread off of the bed. You're going to wake up whoever's still sleeping in the house because I promise you, we can really go in. I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at this picture. I see this dog. That's why I snapped the picture because God said, even in the midst of the coronavirus, he is asleep. Okay, don't, don't miss it. Don't miss it. Watch this. So I had the audacity to come back at God and say, God, the only reason he sleep is because dogs can't catch the coronavirus. Okay, stay with me. And then God had the audacity to come back at me and say, he doesn't know that. So watch this. I said, well, God, although he doesn't know that, he's not human like us. And God this is a shout cue. God said, oh, no, the reason he's asleep is not because he cannot catch the coronavirus. The reason he's asleep is because his master is sitting in the chair right next to him and he knows everything is going to be okay. Okay, you still missed it. So watch this. So then after that, God says, so what I want you to do is turn this TV off, get your butt together, go upstairs, and go to sleep because your master is right beside you too. Somebody just missed a shout cue. I told you you were going to have to get up out of the bed. Now I got your attention. I want you to understand that in the midst of everything that's going on, our master is still right here, and we can have a peace that's a passive understanding because he's working on our behalf. Don't stay up all day just watching and listening to the news. You will push yourself into depression. Please know that he promised never to leave us, never forsake us. He's right here. And just like that dog is able to rest because his master is right there. What he's saying is, I'm not worried about whether there's going to be food on my table. I'm not worried about whether I'm going to have water in my bowl. I can sleep. Because somebody that I have complete confidence in is going to take care of meeting all my needs. And I need you to, come on, shoot some hearts out. Wake somebody up and let them know that even in the midst of pandemic, that God is still God. He's still King of Kings. He's still Lord of Lords. I got to slow my roll because I feel some Sunday morning trying to rise up in us. So that's why I felt led to take us to Romans 8:18. Where he says, the old school scripture says it this way, for I reckon that the suffering of this time is not even worthy to be compared to the glory that will be revealed in us in the future. So I want to let you know today, I want to talk about when it's all over and we're back to normalcy and we're walking into sanctuaries and we're back at work and we're riding in our cars. What's going to be different after the coronavirus than was different before the coronavirus. Can I spend some time with you real quick? You know me. I got four little things real quick. Number one, I promise you, boy, I feel like giving God glory today. I promise you that after all of this is over, testing centers are closed down. We've then got a vaccination for it, and we're walking back into some form of normalcy, and we've got a new routine. I promise you, number one, we will operate with courageous pursuit. You ought to look at somebody, point at them. You can't high-five them, but point at them across the bedroom and say, courageous pursuit. Let me show you what I mean. Look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 through 2, and you'll understand what I'm trying to get you to see. This courageous pursuit is built into the scripture in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And I want to read it together right now. Let's read it. In fact, you need to pull your Bible out and get ready to read this scripture together. Because in that scripture, I believe God gives us a revelation about what is is going to be the way we operate. Look at what it says. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the little of faith, witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Let me tell you what's going to happen. I believe that because God has slowed us down around the world, made us sit down, that here's what's going to happen. When this is over, one of the things that will be different is the dreams and opportunities that we have been dealing with before this, we're going to start to pursue them now. Let me tell you what's going to happen. There are going to be people that have been talking about going back to college, but let me tell you, after this season, you will go back to college. All of those dreams, all 
all of those ideas, there are going to be businesses that will be birthed. There will be opportunities that will be birthed. There will be dreams that will be revealed. And I'm telling you, if we can hold on through this season, when this is over, the thing that's going to be different is there's going to be a group of people that are not going to be afraid to pursue. They're going to go. In fact, let me tell you what. I, the other night I was watching um, All American, and it was so amazing because every time somebody would do something to them that was detrimental, they would come together and then they would be able to go and retaliate. Now, now I know I'm getting ready to rub some of the real religious folk um, the wrong way, but let me tell you something. If you are part of the Mount Churches, let me tell you what I'm doing. I'm taking this personal. The adversary had the nerve to come up in the land where we are believers and allow some kind of pandemic to manifest. And when we survive this, our first Sunday, we coming in here and we're going to anoint ourselves. We're going to get ourselves together. We're going to pray. And then we're going out and we're going to pursue everything. We're going to take back everything that the enemy might have taken. We're going after the enemy. He's going he's gonna to regret the day that he ever did something to the body of Christ. Boy, shoot some hearts up, y'all. High five somebody in, in cyber technology and let them know I'm going to pursue stuff. Stuff that I left undone. Dreams that I have forgotten about. I'm going to dust those things off of the shelf because after I survive this I'll be courageous enough to pursue. Nobody's going to have to tell me I can't go to college. Nobody's going to be able to tell me I can't pursue the promotion. I'm promising you that we will have courageous pursuit. But not only what will be different will be courageous pursuit, but watch this. We're going to have a confident perseverance. Oh, God, I wish I had about three people that would jump up right now in their living room. Now, here's what's so amazing. I know you're sitting there saying, I can't jump up in my living room. People are going to look at me. Well, ain't nobody there to look at you but the dog and the goldfish. So you might as well go ahead and jump up right now and just declare in your house in the midst of this. When this is over, what will be different is I will have confident perseverance. Go with me to Romans chapter 5, verse 3. It's amazing what the scripture is recording there. And I want to read it with you. Look at Romans chapter 5, verse 3. We can rejoice too when we run into problems. Look at somebody and tell them this pandemic is just another problem. We're going to have to deal with. We're going to have to learn how to survive. And trials, for we know that they help us to develop endurance perseverance. Would you look at somebody, text somebody, or at least shoot some hearts up and let somebody know I'm going to be stronger when I come out of this. There are things we didn't even know we could do. Let me stay. And endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. So let me tell you something. When I was a little boy, I never forget one day I'm with my grandfather. My grandfather had a third grade education and he's at the Ford Motor Company. Back then, if you live in Portsmouth, it was Don Coma Ford right there um, near where Tower Mall was. And so, so we go in. My grandfather is buying a new Ford truck. Now I want you to understand my grandfather had a third grade education so he couldn't read and write. I would have to take him to the bank and he would literally put an X beside his name. James L. Parker. I would write James L. Parker out, and then he would put an X because he could not read or write. He only had a third grade education in the country of North Carolina. He worked here, though. He was a self-employed carpenter. Now, watch this. He could not read or write, so he didn't have a driver's license. But Mr. George Brown was one of the, one of the co-workers he had. He had a driver's license and the ability to drive. Stay with me. This is going to be good. My grandfather could not drive could not read or write, never drove a car, but every three years would go buy a new pickup truck. Okay, you still missing. Somebody ought to be ready to help me bless God in here. Boy, I feel like I'm going to have a time. So watch this. So we're at Don Coma Ford. My grandfather is getting ready to buy a new Ford pickup truck, Ford F-150. That was always what he would buy so that he could do his construction company, but he can't drive. So when he buys the truck, he's got to send for Mr. George Brown to come up to the car dealer to drive home his new truck. Okay, you still missing a shout cue. I'm preaching better than you saying amen even in your living room. And so watch this. He can't drive. He can't read. He can't write. But he's buying a new Ford truck. So I'm a teenager. I said, granddaddy, aren't you scared? Here it is, y'all. Shout cue on the way. I said, aren't you afraid that you won't be able to pay the truck? This is what he said to me. Y'all ready for this? He said, son, I survived the Great Depression. 
So nothing intimidates me anymore. I took the best thing that the enemy could do for the whole country. I survived bread lines and soup lines. I survived when people had to sweep up in the street for a nickel a day. He said, I want you to understand if I survived that, there is nothing else that can confront me that I don't think I'm capable of surviving. Oh, God, you missed it right there. What that means is that after this, all of us will be able to get a shirt that says, I survived the coronavirus. I survived the pandemic. You ought to look at somebody and tell them, if God brings me out of this, I'm going to have such a confident perseverance that I will be able to acknowledge clearly no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I need somebody to help me preach. I feel your energy. So why don't you jump up right now, pull your car over, because we're getting ready to give God praise in here. Because I promise you that after this season is over, we're going to be able to endure whatever the enemy brings. When cancer comes, we're going to be able to tell the enemy, you're going to tell me I can't survive cancer? I survived coronavirus. When they get ready to foreclose on your house, you're going to tell them, I can't believe that you think I can't handle your little notice on my door. I survived coronavirus. All of us, when we come through this season, will be able to have a whole nother level of confidence that he that began a good work in me is able to finish what he started. So what will be different after this season is the glory will be revealed to us and through us through courageous pursuit, through confident perseverance, but then number three, confirming priorities. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and everything else is going to be added unto you. Can I suggest to you that what that's teaching us is maybe what God has done with the pandemic is showed us all of the stuff that we were doing that was never a priority in the first place. I know that's a little rough word right there, but what's so amazing is he's locked down everything. So now all we can do is sit in the crib and be able to talk to one another. Maybe what God is saying is your marriage should have been a priority in the first place. So what I'll do is I'll lock you in the house with just you and your wife. I bet y'all will learn how to communicate. Oh God, I bet you'll learn how to communicate by the time this season is over. I bet you'll learn how to love her and respond to her and understand her heart by the time this season is over. Could it be that God allowed everything to get shut down because he wanted to make sure that your sorority or that your business or that all these other things might have been important, but they were not priorities. And I promise you when this is over, people going to come to church on time. I promise you when this is over, people going to get up every day and start to read. I guarantee you our devotional is going to another level. Our relationship with God is going to another level. Our prayer life is going to another level. Our marriages are going to another level. I believe in this season, this has been a long time coming because now fathers are sitting down having to play with their children rather than just putting in a DVD and letting their child entertain themselves. Could it be that when all of this is over, what will be different is we will have confirming priorities. Well, I'm there, y'all. I've tried your time enough. You can tell I'm preaching myself happy in the sanctuary by myself right now. I believe that when the storm is over and everything has changed, that what will be different is, number one, the glory will be revealed to us and through us because we will have the ability to do courageous pursuit. Would you just remind yourself, when I come out of this, I'm going after some stuff. When I come out of this, I'm going to pursue dreams that I thought I'd never qualify for. I'm intelligent enough to go back to school. But not only will we have courageous pursuit, but then we're going to also have a confident perseverance. When we come out of this, we'll all be able to say we survived one of the most tragic seasons in the history of our nation. Maybe what God is doing is letting us know there are some of us in this room, some of us around the world right now that didn't even know how strong we were until we had to deal with this season. We're going to come out of this season and say, I still got my house. I still kept my car. I got a reasonable portion of health and strength. We're gonna, you ought to look at somebody and tell them, you didn't know how strong you were until this coronavirus came. Corona has caused you to see that you are strong and that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. It'll be a confident perseverance and then it's going to be a confirming priority. Many of us right now are learning how to recalibrate our life and things that were important to us, we're not even going to worry about. We're not even going to worry about whether anybody likes me or anymore. That ain't a priority after this. We're not going to worry about whether anybody thanks me or not. We're not going to worry about how much money we got in retirement and how much money we got in the bank. All of those things, it's going to be one thing. I'm going to get up every day and just thank God that I'm still alive. 
alive again. But not only will it be courageous pursuit, not only will it be confident perseverance, not only will it be confirming priorities, but I promise you that when we get through this season right here, we're going to have a compelling praise. That's right. Exodus chapter 15, 1 is such a neat scripture to me because if you do background on that scripture, this is the scripture where they have just crossed the Red Sea. And when they crossed the Red Sea, there is no worship leader in Israel in that season. There is nobody with lights and smoke and organs and hammonds and, and Korg and Yamahas and tridents. The reality is as soon as they cross that Red Sea, Miriam pulls out her tambourine and starts to give God glory because of what she has survived. There it is. You ought to look at somebody and tell them, I promise you that the first Sunday that we come back in this building, we won't need somebody to tell us to stand up because we're not going to want to sit down. I promise you that the first Sunday that we come back in this building, we're not going to need any smoke because the smoke of the Spirit is going to be filling our spirit. I guarantee you that when we come in here, we're not going to worry about who's playing an instrument and what song they sing. Whatever they sing everybody's gonna be standing I guarantee you that when this moment is over every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess oh God I love you and that's why I can't wait that's what I'm holding on to so if people want to know how are you surviving this season I'm just like Jesus I'm looking for the joy that's in front of me so I'll endure the season that I'm in now because I know trouble don't last always and so I'm waiting for that morning season when I can come back in here I promise you I won't have to have a great sermon that week. I won't have to beg people for an amen that week. Minister Earl won't have to ask people to put their hands together that week. We won't have to have the mind ministry giving us some kind of invocation to give up on our, get up on our feet and praise God. Because that day, we're going to be so glad that God kept us. We're going to be so glad that God sustained us, that everybody in the house of the Lord, we're not even going to wait. In fact, that's what I hear God saying now. Come on, y'all. Let's not wait until the first Sunday that we're back in this building. Get up in your living room right now and begin to open your mouth up and thank God for how good he's been in the midst of the pandemic. You got a roof over your head. If you're in your car, pull the car over to the side and hold your hands up. Put the car in park and start to declare what a mighty God we serve. I'm here to tell you that the earth is still the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And he's a keeper. He's a keeper to all of us. And this too shall pass. And I promise you that when we come out of this moment, it will be different. It will be different. Because nobody will have to beg me to praise God then. I'm going to praise him because I know that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I would have fallen victim to this season as well. Look, I'm out of time, but I'm not out of word. I want to thank God for letting me minister to me today. This is not the season to be depressed. This is the season to endure looking towards what's going to be able to happen. I told staff the other day, I said, I can't wait until all of this is over and I can take all of them to dinner and we just sit there and not even talk about church. Used to hear the old folks say, how I got over, how I got over. Soul looks back and wonder. Well, let me tell you, that might have been a good song for that season, but it's not a good song for this season because I'm going to sing it, but I'm going to know how my soul got over. My soul got over because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I'm telling you, it's going to be different when we come out of this moment. Now, before I go, if you're watching us anywhere around the world, you're watching on a tablet, you're watching on your iPhone, you're watching on a laptop, you got us through YouTube on your big 50-inch television, I want to give all of you the same opportunity. If you desire to accept Christ as your Savior, you desire to rededicate your life to Christ or you desire to become a part of this church family, you can join the church. I can't wait until I'm able to tell the saints how many people made a decision for Christ during the pandemic. Maybe you've been waiting for the perfect season to make a decision for Christ. Let me tell you, this is the perfect season. So right now, respond. And I want to pray for you right now. If you're out there and you're accepting Christ as your Savior, just repeat these words after me. Just say, Lord, Thank you for dying for my sins. I acknowledge that I am a sinner saved by grace. I receive you as my Father. 
please receive me as your child in Jesus name well if you just recited that let me tell you something you are born again and we can't wait to see you in one of our worship experiences thank you so much for the privilege of being able to share the gospel once again tweet out some pictures of you and your family you and the goldfish you and your dog the hamster and the parrot in the cage watching the stream today we just want to see where the saints are please check your email regularly stay on social media regularly we're going to be communicating almost daily all day with what's going on with the Mount Global Fellowship of Churches I'm proud of what all the pastors are doing I want to remind you that if you haven't had increase during this season God doesn't have an expectation you cannot give what you don't have but for those of us that have been able to by grace of God continue to be sustained and have increase I just want to remind you give bring your tithes and offering if you want to do it online there's direction about doing it online you can text to give if you're old school and you just need to put it in an envelope put it in an envelope write your name on it designate which location which site it's for and you can come right here to the cathedral there's a secure box right outside the admin office and you can drop your tithes and offering in there look y'all I can't wait I'm not worried about Easter because Easter is a different day every year so let me tell you when Easter Sunday is going to be Easter Sunday is going to be the first Sunday that we come back in these buildings if nothing else God has showed me that the church is definitely not the building the church is the people so on behalf of all the pastors all the saints love you thank you for letting us be in your house today I promise you that it will be different because the glory that God is waiting to reveal will be revealed to us and through us. Love you to life. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, present us faultless before the throne of God, to the only almighty God, be glory and majesty, dominion and power. I call us, even in the midst of a pandemic, blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when we come, and blessed when we go. In Jesus' name, amen. Ooh, that was a good word. That was awesome. I <laughs> know, but awesome. the mouth, boy, we, we, we do some great things yes, online. online. Good gracious. Yes. Well, 8 o'clock service over. Uh, I'm going to go up and get me some more sleep. Go no, there. we're going to stay for 10. We're going to watch 10 also. Why? What do you mean? Babe, I just watched what 8. What else do you have to do? Baby, hold up. The choir sung good. Okay. The word was powerful. I can't say amen at the same time again. Well, how about you sit in a different section? Go sit over there. And it'll look different. But we are staying for Bishop o'clock. said don't ask nobody to move their seat once they done sat down. Now I'm not moving. And I'm not gonna sit here and watch ten o'clock service. Oh, so now you wanna listen now you wanna repeat what Bishop said. I heard what I always hear what my bishop say. Sit down, stay seated, and don't move. Thank you.